The Keystone Vision testing machines are extremely user friendly, but you need to ensure that you follow these instructions carefully for all aspects of using the machine, including setting up the equipment, sitting down your subject and the running and interpreting of the tests. If instructions are not properly followed, you will run the risk of breaking the machine or gaining inaccurate results. To set up the machine correctly, start by carefully lifting it out of its case and placing it on a table. Do not lift the machine out by the more delicate viewfinder, but rather by its metal sides. Plug in the power supply unit and also plug the control unit into the machine, being careful to push it in the right way round. To open the machine out, release the magnetic catch and lift up the metal body. Now power on the machine. The LEDs on the control unit should come on, flicker and then stop at the first test, called Acuity Right, which we'll come onto in the testing section. The LEDs for FAR and DAY should also light up. The machine will also go through a rotational cycle whilst powering up. When sitting down the person you're testing, you first need to ensure that they're sitting on a chair at a comfortable height to the table. The participant needs to be able to comfortably look straight down into the machine, so the viewfinder will need to be adjusted to the right angle. There is a sensor inside the viewfinder that will detect whether the face is properly aligned. If it detects that it's not properly aligned, the backlight inside will go off. If this occurs, the face needs to be realigned, perhaps altering the viewfinder angle or changing the chair you're using. If the machine continues not to recognise the face, then this manual sensor override button on your control unit can be used. All tests are given with both eyes open. The occlude buttons on the control panel for left and right eye are to be used for the right and left eye acuity tests on the rare occasions when it may be desirable to test one eye without the other eye seeing. Please see the instructional manual for more details on this. For the VS5 machine tests, spectacle and contact lens wearers should use any glasses or lenses normally worn for the distance being tested. For example, if corrective lenses are used for distance, they should be worn for the first test, and if reading glasses are worn, they should only be put on for VDU and near vision tests. Keep any bifocals or multifocals on at all times, and look through the appropriate part of the lens. The testing sequence demonstrated here is as per instruction manual. Test F1 on the VS5 machine measures the right eye for distance. Our employer will now begin test 1 with our participant Steve. The machine will automatically start with this test. The questions to be read out for each test can be found in the instruction manual. Right Steve, we're going to do test 1. Now what you'll see is nine blocks with numbers in them. I want you to read the first block on the top row, which is block 1A. Block 1A. Yes. That's 5, 4, 8, 6, 3, 9. If the participant had identified at least five of the six digits in block 1A correctly, then he would be considered as having 6-6 six, six or 20-20 acuity in the right eye and would not need to read further. However, Steve has got two digits wrong, so this test requires him to carry on reading the contents of the blocks, continuing across each row consecutively from left to right, A1, B1, C1, then on to the next line of A2, B2, C2 and so on, until he's able to read a box correctly. One mistake is allowed for blocks A1, B1, C1 and A2, as indicated on the record form. Can you continue and read the next block, please? Um, um, That's 1B. 1B, yep, OK. 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 8. Steve has now got only one digit wrong and can stop this test here. Now press the advance key marked ADV on your control panel to move on to test F2. This test measures left eye acuity. The structure of test F2 is identical to test F1 and should be conducted in the same way. 
press the advance key to move on to the next test, test F3. This tests both eyes for distance. Again, the structure of this test is the same as the preceding two and should be conducted in the same way. Press the advance key to move on to test F4. Test F4 measures night vision. Switch to the night setting on the control panel. The subject needs to read the numbers in the first block in the top row box 1A. If the subject is not able to read these numbers, ask him or her to read down column A, rather than across as with previous tests, until the numbers in a block are read correctly. To move on to the next test, test I1, you do not need to press the advance key. Instead, press the INT1 button on the control panel. You now need to switch to day on your control panel. This test is optional for those who use workbench tools. It should be conducted in the same way as test F4, but reading down column B. Press INT2 on the control panel to move on to the next test. This will activate testing at an intermediate distance of 60 centimeters. The test has the same structure as tests F1 and I1 and should be conducted in the same way but reading down column C. Now press the advance key to move on to test 5. You will also need to press the FAR key on the control panel. Begin by asking the participant whether they can see a scale of numbers and dots with two cross lines running through it. There are now two questions to ask about this scale. Firstly, at which number, or between which two numbers, does the red line pass through the scale? Secondly, at which number, or between which two numbers, does the green line pass through the scale? Mark the number that the participant states the lines cross. For the red line, some participants will perceive the line to move, in which case, mark the span of numbers it crosses. Where the response is delayed by this apparent movement of the red line, you can assist by asking for a number within the range of movement. When this has been obtained, determine how far each way the movement continues. Press the advance key to move on to test F6, which measures far point fusion. The question for this test is simply, how many balls do you see? Press the advance key to move to test F7. This test measures far point stereopsis, or depth perception. This test consists of rows of symbols. In each row, one symbol should appear to stand out in front of the others. Give the patient some time to adjust, and then begin by asking which symbol sticks or floats out, or appears closer than the others in the top row. Then ask the same for rows 2, 3, 4 and 5. Tick off the correct answers across the record sheet until the last correct response is given. The order of symbols that stick out in each row from top row to bottom should be box, heart, cross, star and cross. To move on to test F8, press the advance key. This test investigates colour vision. Ask the participant to read out the numbers in the three circles on the top row, and then do the same for the bottom row. The circles on the top row test for red-green colour perception, and the circles on the bottom row test for blue-violet colour perception. At this point, the peripheral vision test should now be conducted. You do not need to press the advance key again for this. Steve, can you stay focused on the test panel, please? Yeah. Now I'm going to conduct test 13 straight after test 7, so can you please stay focused on the coloured circles? Okay. At any time, a light may flash on either the right side or the left side, so please can you respond with either left side or right side? Use the control panel to show a 45 degree nasal field and to check temporal fields at angles of 85 degrees, 70 degrees and 55 degrees. Please note that the 45 degree test for the right eye lights up on the left side and vice versa. When the peripheral vision test is complete, the near vision test should now be conducted. To do this, press the near button on the control panel, then the advance key each time to go through tests N1 to N6. When marking for tests F1, F2 and F3, you need to look at what you've marked in the test